Welcome to Industry TV Network. Make sure you hit the like button, share, and subscribe. So, um, I've been uh, looking at this, well, rather, I've been trying to figure out whether or not I'm going to watch this new movie, uh, The Deliverable, The Deliverance, on Netflix. Because the topic is kind of touchy. Um, and I'm not used to seeing demonic possession movies involving black people. But apparently this movie is based on a true story. And it is getting a lot of publicity. Um, let's see what this is all about. Let, let me tell you guys. Opening with a title card that claims its story is inspired by true events. The Deliverance chronicles the plight of the Pittsburgh-based Jackson family as they contend with a demonic possession that threatens to destroy them from the inside out. Directed by Lee Daniels from a screenplay he co-wrote with Elijah Bynum, Magazine Dreams, and David Kagashow, Orphan First Kill, the new religiously fueled horror, which received a limited theatrical release on August 16th before arriving on Netflix on August 30th, is a dramatization of the alleged haunting of the Ammons family that took place in Gary, Indiana in 2011. Now, I remember hearing um, uh, news reports about that, um, I think in passing, like because I'm always reading and looking at things. I did hear about some sort of demonic possession of a black family in Indiana in 2011. I wasn't sure of the year, but I do remember hearing about that. The movie stars Andre Day as Ebony Jackson, a fictionalized version of Latoya Amons, a mother of three who began experiencing what she claimed were supernatural occurrences from infestations of flies to the sounds of footsteps and doors opening in the night. After moving herself, her mother, played by Glenn Close, and her children, played by Caleb McLaughlin, Demi Singleton, and Andre B. Jenkins, into a rental home in Gary that has since come to be known as the Demon House of Indiana. An investigation into the Ammons family's alleged haunting published in 2014 by the Indianapolis Star detailed how Ammons supposedly came to believe that she and her children then ages 7, 9, and 12 had been possessed by demons that were residing in their newly rented home on Carolina Street in Gary. While Amon spoke to the star on the condition that her children not be interviewed or named, she signed releases that allowed the newspaper to review medical, psychological, and official records that were not open to the public and described as not always flattering. Ammons claimed that the strange occurrences at the Carolina, Carolina Street House began in December 2011 when the family noticed that, despite winter temperatures, swarms of black flies were infiltrating their screened-in porch. This is not normal, Ammons' mother Rosa Campbell told the star. We killed them and killed them and killed them, but they kept coming back. Things reportedly escalated over the next few months, with Ammons describing increasingly bizarre and dangerous episodes during which the kids allegedly levitated, were thrown across rooms, and spoke in deep, unnatural voices. The Gary Police Department, Indiana Department of Child Services, and local hospital all became involved in the case, with officers medical staff and social workers reporting they had witnessed incidents of the nature that Ammons was perpetuating. Others were skeptical that the origin of the problem was paranormal. In April 2012, an unnamed complainant filed an official report with DCS asking the agency to investigate Ammons for possible child abuse or neglect. The source reported that they believed Ammons was suffering from mental health concerns and that the children were performing for their mother and she was encouraging the behavior. Shortly after, DCS took emergency custody of the kids without a court order. 
The agency was then granted temporary wardship of Ammon's children. Following an evaluation of Ammon's, Ammon's youngest son, a clinical psychologist concluded that the child's stories about the possession were bizarre, fragmented, and illogical, and changed each time he told them. This appears to be an unfortunate and sad case of a child who has been induced into a delusional system perpetrated by his mother, she wrote. Another psychologic, psych, psychologist reported similar findings about the older two children. Eventually, in June 2012, Reverend Michael Maganot, the priest at St. Stephen Martyr Parish in Merrillville, Indiana, performed three major exorcisms on Ammons at his church and blessed her new home in Indianapolis. After moving to the new house and working to meet the objectives of DCS case plan for her family, Ammons regained custody of her children in November 2012. The landlord of the Carolina Street House said there were no issues with the home before or after the Ammons family lived there. However, the house later became the subject of Zach Baggins' 2018 documentary Demon House and was demolished in 2016 as part of the film's production. Baggins is best known as the host of the Travel Channel series Ghost Adventures. Like most possession-fueled horrors that purport to be based on real-life events, Think the Conjuring and the Exorcism of Emily Rose, The Deliverance, takes significant liberties with the facts of the case, especially when it comes to the exorcism or deliverance portion of the story. However, in an interview with The Hollywood Reporter, Daniels made it clear that he was approaching the film as a faith-based thriller. We had never seen this story through this lens of this African-American woman on screen. And I just felt we're in such dark times. And I don't think people really know how dark of times we are in. And I felt like I needed to get reconnected to my higher power, he said. I'm scaring you to Jesus for me. It could be scaring you to Allah. It could be scaring you to Buddha. It could be scaring you to whomever it is that you have faith in. But it's scaring you to a faith. When asked by the reporter whether he spoke with Amons while making the movie, Daniel stated that he talked to her once or twice at the beginning of the process. It's my interpretation of her life story. I purposely didn't want to meet her because I was nervous, he said, but I spoke to her and she's lovely. She was at peace. The director went on to elaborate on specific details of the Ammons case that he chose to tweak. What I've changed a little bit is I made her mother white because I have so many mixed race friends and I wanted to talk about what it's like to have a white mother and live in a black girl's body, he said. And the deliverance person was actually a guy and not a girl. But there are so many women that do this work too that don't get recognized. So I changed that a little bit and of course their names and such. The film also shifts the setting and nature of the religious rite that took place, changing it from an exorcism at a church to a so-called deliverance at the family's home. As for what the difference between the two rituals is, Day told the Boston Herald that to her understanding, a deliverance is less about just exorcising a demon about someone. It's more about the whole deliverance of the person, she said not just getting rid of the demon, but actually ushering them into a relationship with God or with Christ. It's a whole transformation thing. Now, here's the thing that, that I wanted to say about this. Like, there is so many demonic possession movies out there, and it's been turned into a form of entertainment. But I don't see anybody really taking this very seriously. Like, um, there's a lot of people out there that don't believe that this actually exists. As you can see, um, when the mother was trying to tell people and get help that her children may be possessed and it may be something paranormal, no one believed her and they was calling her crazy. But Lee Daniels said we're in such dark times, but 
we still have all these dark movies coming out. And Lee Daniels also reported that there was some trouble on the set. Now, I don't know if he's doing, if he said this, for publicity, or is this really true? But let's see what they had to say. Director Lee Daniels has spoken about the strange happenings that occurred on the set of his new Netflix horror movie, The Deliverance, which is based on a true story. The film starring Andre Day, Glenn Close, Anjane, Ellis Taylor, and Monique follows Ebony Jackson, a struggling single mother fighting her personal demons who moves her family into a new home for a fresh start. But when strange occurrences inside the home raise the suspicions of child protective services and threaten to tear the family apart, Ebony soon finds herself locked in a battle for her life and the souls of her children. This is the trailer. Let's see what the trailer looks like, guys. Remember, before we get started, whatever it says to you, do not listen to it. It will play on your heart. It will play on your mind. My name is Apostle Bernice James. The other person present is Ebony Jackson, your mother. Father, we ask that you cleanse and sanctify us for this deliverance. Ever since I tried Hidden Valley Ranch. Okay, so that sounds like it's going to be a scary one, y'all. I don't think I'm going to watch it. It's based on a 2014 Indianapolis Star article, The Exorcisms of LaToya Almonds, about a mother who claimed that she and her three children were tormented by shadowy figures and swarms of black flies. In a recent interview with Sirius XM, alongside his cast, Daniel said he organized prayer circles on set in a bid to prevent supernatural incidents. Things happen, and I was not going to let things happen on my set. And also, I needed it for me, Daniel said. And even with that, there were still things that happened on the set. That was, my sister in every movie that I've ever done as my good luck charm. And she was in the scene with Glenn in the chemo scene. And she's the one that sort of gave her attitude in the chemo scene, Daniel said. And two days later, after being in the chemo scene, she was diagnosed with lung cancer, literally. My dog died on the set. Monique, who plays a social worker in the movie, added that she was hospitalized after filming one particularly dramatic scene. Mr. Daniels had me doing a scene, okay? And we're outside. It was just... The demon was supposed to be on top of the building. So they kept blowing this. I mean, at one point I'm like, Lee, do you have to do this SHIT? Because I can't breathe, Monique said. She added, so when I got finished, right, my thyroid was a big, I mean, it was just sick. Oh, baby. I was like, what kind of SHIT is this? There was a lot going of things happening with the deliverance. Stories of eerie goings on have been commonplace on the sets of horror films since 1973's The Exorcist and it sounded like Monique couldn't even get her words together. I mean, I guess they have this, um, this is a transcript of what she actually said, but she's not even making any sense in the, in the word play that, in the wording that she used to just, to, uh, express herself. During the shoot, several of the cast and their family members passed away unexpectedly, including star Linda Blair's grandfather. Production also had to be halted after a sudden electrical fire burnt down the set and a priest was called to exercise the filming location. The Deliverance is out now on Netflix. From news to politics, travel to sport, well, that's the end of that, but... You know, as I got older, because I love scary movies, and as Halloween's getting ready to come around, I was even going to do a video about some of the scariest horror movies based on magazine articles, and um, just in season with Halloween. And I started to watch this movie, but something inside of me won't allow me to watch it, so I'm just going to respect that. Um, I'm not very comfortable with depictions of demonic possession. Um... Not even the exorcist. Like, I watched the exorcist, but 
I don't really like to watch it. Like, I have to be in a certain frame of mind to watch it. And I'm very aware that I'm watching something that may possibly have something, you know, spiritually, you know, um, it does something to your subconscious mind. So, you guys let me know what y'all think about it. And let me know if y'all watch this movie. Also, um, when The Exorcist was released, there was a whole lot of people that was walking out of that movie this was the first type of movie like that and people were fainting and leaving the movie and running out of the theater you know but i guess nowadays people are used to it they've groomed us to to be able to watch these type of things but you guys let me know what you think in the comments peace and love